Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Westwood Living Podcast. Tom Lydon with you, and I'm in the office of Dr. Ryan Welter from Regenerous Med Spa and Cosmetic Surgery and many other things, which we're going to hop into. First of all, great to be sitting here. I know how busy you are, so I appreciate the time that you're giving me to do this. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on, and thank you for this opportunity to uh, talk about what we do here. It's going to be, um, there's a lot of different aspects to what we do, so I'm excited to be able to have that conversation today. It really seems like a cornucopia of goods that are made available through this office, which, by the way, is huge and growing and expanding and is under construction. There's a lot happening in that regard, which we can talk about too. But is there a way to summarize, in essence, what you're looking to achieve here each and every day? Yeah, I think that when we talk about Regenerous and Regenerous Medical and Regenerous Cosmetic Surgery, we're really talking about wellness, really starting from the uh, inside out. We want to make sure that uh, everyone uh, who's looking for anti-aging and wellness has a place where they can be evaluated and look at uh, longevity through a different lens and find all the solutions to help you live longer, healthier. Um, and then we have a lot of cosmetic options as well that are just your routine basic cosmetic uh, treatments, you know, Botox fillers all the way to, you know, surgical options as well. And it's really part of my vision. I came back from a background of biochemistry and molecular biology before I got into medical school as part of what I wanted to do. And I'm happy to tell that story a little bit, but, you know, it all kind of has come full circle for me bringing cell-based therapy, regenerative medicine, wellness, health, longevity. Everybody now is really searching for, I think, the the right answers, the right mentor, the right uh, pathway to better health and uh, better life, uh, better living and wellness. And those are all the things that we try to provide here on top of all the other things that we do, which are more service related. So it's a really interesting mix. All you have to do is look at the social media profile and see how you travel all around the world. In fact, as we record this, you're getting set to go to another conference that's in France. So right. you're a man in demand when it comes to your expertise. So I guess we should get there eventually. But first, how did it start? You talked about your interest in you know, basic biology and chemistry. And as a kid, was that your thing? Is this how you always envisioned your life going? Uh, no, I don't think anyone, you never end up where you think you're going to go. That's the great thing about life is that you always find out that you're, you know, you set off on one path and you end up on another and that's, that's fine. And that's how it should be. I think that's really a big part of living life and living it well. But what, one of the things that I started out was I had a friend who his dad was a neurosurgeon and, um, I saw what he did. I love what he did. And I thought that's what I want to do. I want to be a neurosurgeon. So I went to college uh, with that endeavor in mind. I got into a very good lab. Uh, with a uh, basically uh, someone who did a lot of x-ray crystallography and biochemistry and so I got that huge that background and then decided I wanted to get my doctorate I thought that protein biochemistry would be a really great way to swing into neurosurgery and the neurosciences as I got into medical school I went to medical school at the University of Oklahoma and I got my doctorate in biochemistry at Oklahoma State University and my wife and I uh, we got married um, and she was from here she went down to Oklahoma State because her dad went there basically on a whim. And so we met down there, and then she brought me all the way back to Massachusetts. So when it came to looking for residencies, I was looking for everything out in Massachusetts. And so the way residencies work is you really do want to interview in a lot of places, which means you want to have a lot of rotations in a lot of places so you can get to know the people that you're working with and doing things. So we have been married for uh, just over a few years. Uh, my daughter, Skye, who works here now, she works at the front desk. She's uh, 25 years old now. She was just born, so that's how long ago we're talking now. She was basically on her way and then was, you know, we had her uh, in Oklahoma and we moved out here two weeks later. And I started doing my rotations, and one of the rotations I was doing was neurosurgery, and I hated it. Oh, and get so, out of here. Yeah, it was crazy. The dream was not the dream. Yeah, the dream was not the dream. <laughs> I was at uh, Rhode Island Hospital. Uh, we were on every other night shifts doing overnights, and you know, everyone was just miserable. They were just, the, all the doctors were divorced. Um, the hours were just crazy. And I recognized that being a good neurosurgeon in that academic environment, which is what I want to do. I've worked my whole life now up to that point. I mean, I'm close to, you know, getting to 30 at this point because, you know, it takes that long to do all this. And I've got my doctor in biochemistry. I'm doing what I thought was my dream endeavor. And I get into it, and I realize, and it's not like it it just hit me all once. It was more because of the family 
aspect of it. Like I said, that's why I brought my daughter into it. You know, she's being born. I just recognized that this is a vocation in itself. If you're going to do this, you have to live this. You, you know, family comes way, not even second, not even third, not even fourth on your list. And family was very important to me. I made the quick decision, uh, which was twofold. One was that we needed to stay in Massachusetts because my wife's mother was kind of ill with MS at the time. And so uh, I, the next rotation I had was in family practice with OB. And so I did that and I said, you know what, I'll do that. And I changed on a whim and did my residency at Brown doing that. And that's what I ended up doing the first part of my career. So what ultimately led to the birth of Regenerous? <laughs> it was a long story to that, but I don't want to make it too long. But but the basics, the, the, the long and short of it is that I started to do primary care and uh, I delivered babies and I was full service primary care. I would go to the intensive care unit. I run on my patients there. I would see all my patients in the intensive care unit and uh, see them in the in the office. And then if a woman went into the hospital to deliver, I'd go and I'd help her deliver the baby. And I would have to cancel all my patients for the day if I was gone for the day. So I quickly got into the model of having a mid-level help me for the sick visits. And before I knew it, I had seven urgent care centers. So we grew and we opened up like seven different urgent care centers. And uh, I was building a big building uh, in Raynham. We were building a, a big 37,000 square foot medical building. And I put out a bunch of adverts for the doctors to come in um, and join us. And this woman who actually was a hair transplant technician at the time in the cosmetic world applied for the building. Uh, and she said, I don't know if you know it, but hair transplant surgeons, the, the, the techs do a lot of the work. And she was telling me all these things. I said, well, that's great. If you, want, if you have a doctor, you want to work with them, rent some space, and we'll be all set. And she said, well, no, I heard about you and what I was doing. And I was doing a lot of things with platelet-rich plasma also at that time. And I was starting to use my biochemistry background to help people with joints and knees and things like that. So it was all kind of coming together. And she said, no, I want to work with you because I saw what you were doing. And I'm interested in that. And I said, well, look, I don't know anything about hair transplant or anything like that. But if you find a doctor and you want to rent some space, I'm going to have a beautiful building. It's going to be right on the highway. You can get to it and, and do that. And that very weekend, and at this point, I've got, I think, maybe four kids, five. I don't remember at the time. We were all heading to a wedding in Iowa that very weekend. And my whole father's side of the family was going to be there. And so uh, we drove out there in the minivan. We got all out there. And it ended up being my dad's kind of uh, you know, he's got uh, five brothers and sisters, so a bunch all my aunts, aunts and uncles are there and everything. And he's coming out with his ha hair transplant that he had just done and hadn't told anybody about. And I looked at him, I was like, wow, dad, that's amazing. This like individual, I, I thought they did plugs. I didn't really know what they did at the time. Again, this is going way back. And so I saw what they did to him, and I immediately got back. I called Carol. I said, you know, I don't know if it's a sign for God, but whatever, I'm going to learn what you do. And uh, I started to get into that cosmetic side of things and it bridged everything together because before I knew it, I was using cell-based therapy to help with hair restoration and all of my biochemistry background was coming back together. I realized the really innate power of regenerative medicine, the aspect of cellular techniques, and it just became something that became full circle and uh, put it all together. This is a big building. And you've got a lot of space. So what's the vision for this building? So we really want to have a full circle uh, wellness center that basically looks at the individual in terms of uh, wellness and health and provides all the uh, different, We have, there's basically, I, I've identified at least six pillars of uh, longevity that are important to assess. Uh, hormonal balance, you know, uh, hormone replacement therapy is really important as we age. If you lose your hormones, you're not going to be able to do much of anything. You know, mental health is important. Um, IV therapies, uh, all of these types of things that basically help to uh, ensure wellness for and longevity for the future, combined with all the cellular therapies we have and the cosmetic therapies. So basically a, a place where you can go and essentially turn back the clock of aging step by step from the cellular level, uh, get your biologic age to be better than your chronological age and move forward in, in health and wellness, whether we want to approach that from the cosmetic side first or, for, or what I prefer really working from the cell level inside out approach either way. 
get you to where you want to do in your goals and what your wellness goals are? Well, for those of you listening, here's how I'm going to break this down. There's a lot of great content, and this was really a good get to know you of Dr. Ryan Welter from Regenerous. I'm actually going to record two additional podcasts here. The next one we're going to share with you is going to specifically talk about regenerative medicine and all the different things that are done here in this office and how you can benefit from it. And then the third episode will focus specifically on hair restoration. So thank you for your time. For Perfect. this episode, we'll re we'll restart, and we'll share that second episode in a bit. Thank you. Mm -hmm.